So please, please, position yourself in prayer. The teachings of 2017, you'll find it on uh, our Father's Home channel, or even if you just ask the office, work through it, work through it for next year, the waiting on God. If I understand the waiting, I will understand the story. But I can fly like an ostrich, I can struggle in the wind, I can fight the storm that will be coming, and the storms will come, and the storms will come more, and the storm, you can pray against the storm, it's not going to happen. But you need to pray how to let the storm work for you as the eagle that can rise, rise with the, with the storm, and the turmoil of the storm is giving him actually strength to rise above. Hello? But if the church can understand the waiting, if the church can understand the waiting, and part of my day was for the past two days, Jonah, Jonah 2. So I thought, what, Lord? Um, and oh, yeah, it's all about prayer. Well, praise the Lord. If I quickly want to share with you, very quick, hallelujah. Then, we, you, then you prepare to say thank you. Amen. Good. In chapter 1, you know the whole story. The Lord sent a great wind because of the church not accurate in the right place. My brother, my sister, if me and you, if me and you, if we don't position ourselves accurately, not the devil, but even God will send the storm. Are you with me? And God will send the storm. By his grace will send the storm. For the sake of, the, of saving Nineveh. For the sake of saving the nations. Saving the city. Saving Bloemfontein. Saving this nation. Hello. He will send the storm on his anointed ones. On the ones that are called by his name. To go out and make the difference. To go out and make the difference. And Jonah will not be destroyed. Jonah will not be killed. Hello? But God will send the storm when me and you, we position ourselves and the church position itself wrongly in the nations. So this man not willing, not willing to pay the price, if I can say like that, for the call on his life. Even feel intimidated by it. He go his own way. He didn't go and kill somebody. He didn't go and live an adulterous life. He didn't go and do all this other rubbish. He, he just decided, I'm going on the ship. He likes, it doesn't look like somebody that is now busy with a lot of rubbish. Not at all. He's just not going for what God has for him. Because what God has for you is going to be challenging. More and more and more is going to be challenging. So what about we learn tomorrow in that thing that is the challenge so that we can grow that tomorrow and we will mature, mature, mature as sons of God so that we can be part of the church of the firstborn, Hebrews 12. Because we've come not to the blood of all the sacrifices. We've come to the blood of the Lamb. Amen. The blood that speaks of better things than the blood of Abel, says Hebrews 12. Blood speaks of better things, of forgiveness, about hope, about the future. Amen. But if I go there, I went to, if I understand that, and if I understand Jesus, the mediator, and if I stand, God is the judge judging my flesh, and I allow him to judge my flesh tomorrow, so that I can deal with rubbish. Then I come to be part of the church of the firstborn. That is the church that are maturing. The church that God's going to use more and more in the end time. The church of the firstborn. That's Hebrews 12. But in that I must allow God. Even if he must shake my life. Even must, he must put my life in a storm. By his grace he's going to do that. Because he loves the people of Nineveh. He loves the nations. His dream is to get the nations as his home, as his home, as his home. So in that sense, may God have mercy on us so that we understand what to do. Because this man, he wasn't destroyed in the storm, 
because he was willing to be honest. He was willing to be honest. He was willing to where he need to take the blame to say, guys, it's me. I'm your problem. I'm your problem. Throw, throw me over. That takes a lot of guts. Oh, guys, it's my fault. Forgive me. But let's try. Let's try. Let's try and fight the storm. God in his mercy will get us through to the other side. Oh, this guy that was so selfish to go in his own way, suddenly, totally the opposite. Totally the opposite. Come and he says, throw me over. I'm your problem. If I'm over in the sea, most probably drowned, chance 99%, then your storm, everything will calm. You lot of heathen that doesn't serve God, <laughs> there will be mercy on you if you throw me over. How far are me and you willing, willing, willing to lay down our lives? Moses said, God, take me out of the book of life, but please don't kill your people. Don't destroy your people. For your name's sake, take my name out of the book of life. Yay! Yo, that's a prayer. That was Moses, a friend of God, who saw him face to face, that was willing in intercession to pray such a type of prayer. Say, take my name out of the book of life, but please save your people for your name's sake, so that the nations will not say, God was able to take them out of Egypt, but he wasn't able to take them into Canaan. They cannot say that, Lord. For your fame, save your people. Ah, may God help you. May God help me. That we will rise up and come into that stature of such an unselfish life. Not what can I get out of the word? What can I get out of prayer? What can I get out of a sermon? What can I get out of the church? We're going to grow up in Jesus' name. I pray for myself. I pray for you that we will do that. Amen. Yeah, amen. So he said, they had to say, okay, how can you sleep? Do you know I had gone below the deck? They were like, Freaking out. All the sailors were afraid and each cried out to his own God. The world is crying out to something. They are cry crying out to understand. They are crying out to have their finances, their business, businesses, everything to have, be successful because that's the gods that they know. They don't know how to serve the living God. Because the church in this place, in this example, is asleep in the middle of the storm thinking everything is okay. I'm, I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm in the boat. But asleep. And may it not be that the world must first wake us up. That the storms must be so hellish, so lot of rubbish happening around us, that only then the world must wake us up. How can you sleep? How can you sleep? Church of Christ, get up and call on your God. Get up. The world, the world <laughs> tells Jonah. The world can tell you and me. Get up and call on your God. Maybe he, will, maybe he will take notice of us so that we will not perish. Okay, and in the end, they ask him, tell us, who is responsible for making this trouble? Who is responsible for making this trouble? What kind of work do you do? Are we willing to tell the world what kind of work are we supposed to do? Are we willing to tell the world? Where do you come from? What type of work are you supposed to do? Where do you come from? They need to know I'm coming from a different world. I'm in this world, but I'm not from this world. I'm from a different kingdom. They're supposed to know that. They're supposed to know the work that you do with Christ. What is your country? From what people are you? All these questions, more and more to the church. But if they think, you know, I know this guy. I know the kind of work. They are just there to... Blame shift. I see all the trouble that they're going through. They're miserable, a lot of Christians. 
from where are they? I don't know where they come from. They grew up in the church, these religious systems. You know, these guys are there are in religion, very narrow-minded, very this, very that, very, 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 you're not allowed, you're allowed, you're not allowed. <sighs> they need some other crutch. Because when they're in trouble, they must go and asking God to do something, throw a tantrum, and then God does something, and then they go and do their own thing in any case again. That will not be the testimony. By God's mercy, the church are going to grow up. Amen. Amen. Let it be so. I'm a Hebrew. I worship the Lord. I worship the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. Are you willing to testify and identify with your God out there? No, in the professional world, there where you work, it's not allowed to do that. No, in the school, we're not allowed to do that. More and more, we will not be allowed to do it. More and more, if you say what you believe, there's no freedom of speech. Freedom of speech for everything with the most disgustable rubbish from hell. Freedom of speech, if you want to say, I identify with the animal men. I identify with the 26 titles that you can give yourself. America, the guys that are supposed to be the most advanced, pioneer. But the wisdom of the world will be foolishness, and the foolishness of the world will be exposed, but still the world will think it's wisdom. But why? What's the problem? Just sleeping in the boat. While well, they are trying their best to find answers, trying their best to, in the most foolish ways, bring forth things that we must say. And then we say, what, what rubbish is this? What rubbish is this? What about getting out of our sleep, standing up, and the rubbish will have to disappear if I'm willing to give my life. If I'm willing to give my life. May God help you. May God help me. I worship the Lord. What you need to do? Throw me over. I'm not going to go into that. Hallelujah. Um, then chapter 2. Been thrown over. Here's the fish. Okay, I'm in the fish. <laughs> and uh, in the storm, you, God in his mercy will get you out of the storm. No, 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 no. God will then many times bring you into a place where you can feel even more uh, suffocated, more surrounded by, okay, what on earth is this? This happened to nobody before. What I'm going through is so intense. I cannot think of anybody who went through something like what I am going through now. Huh. Nobody's been there before. <laughs> but in that place, in my distress, in my distress, let's go quickly with verse 2. In my distress, I called to the Lord. Lord, take me out of this fish, please. Not at all. He didn't pray one of that sentences. He didn't pray to be delivered from the fish. Not at all. In my distress, I called to the Lord, and he answered me. Where did he answer you? No, you just ran away. <laughs> But I called unto the Lord and he answered me. He's, he's not now out of the fish on the seashore. That is when we're supposed to pray that, Jonah. That you called on the Lord and he answered you. No. This is before. And this is not a trick. He's saying this in the, in the fish. Is he confused? He give a certain testimony about who is my God. From the deep in the realm of the dead, I called. I called for help. And you listened to my cry. But he's not out yet. You hold me into the depths, into the very heart of the seas. And the currents swirled about me. You did it, Lord, not the devil. Not the devil. God is in control of your life. So if you're going through some stuff, start to honor God. Start to talk about his faithfulness, how he answered you in the past. Not in the way me and you wanted him to answer necessarily, but he answered. Are you with me? And your waves, your waves and breakers swept over me. I said, I have been banished from your sight, yet I will look again toward your holy temple. While being in the fish in the storm. And engulfing waters threatened me. The deep surrounded me. 
Seaweed was wrapped around my head. To the roots of the mountains I sank down. The earth beneath barred me in forever. But you, Lord my God, brought my life up from the pits. What the heck? It's, it's not nothing. Who says something like that going to happen? <sighs> doesn't matter what you feel. doesn't matter what you go through. Honor the truth. That where you are, you are free to honor him. You are free to worship him. You are free to love him. You are free to respect him. Nothing can hold you back. Anywhere, anywhere, wherever you are. When my life was ebbing away, I remembered you, Lord. And my prayer, my prayer rose to you, to your holy temple, because God has a heart for the nations. And he will bring you into that place. And he has the faith that you will respond accurately. He has the faith that you will call out to him. He, will, he has the faith that you will cry out unto him. He has the faith that you will testify about him in your heart. You have a testimony in your heart while in the fish who's in the storm. There's a testimony and testify about the testimony in your heart. Before go and testify in the Navy, the testimony must work in here. Amen. The testimony must work in the church before we can go and preach to the nations. But I with shouts of what? Of anguish. What is the, when you're in that place, what will you, the shouts of terror? Uh, no, I think it says something else. But I, with shouts of grateful praise, how freaky can it get? <laughs> with grateful praise, will sacrifice to you what I have vowed I will make good I will say salvation salvation comes from the Lord you go into deeper turmoil deeper turmoil uh, boat gonna crash in the sea no let's go deeper let's go into the storm let's be thrown into the sea no let's go deeper let's go into a fish and in that place I'm just saying and declaring salvation is unto the Lord God, if you save me from this, then I will declare that salvation comes from you. No, 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 no. There's a testimony alive in this man. There must be a testimony alive in the church in the midst of the biggest storms and more and more in the world. The storms were, you open your mouth about Christ in the school. You will be nailed in so many countries already. Not in barbaric countries, in the most sophisticated educated, professional countries. Hello, and in that place, nobody can take the testimony from your heart. Who's that guy, Richard Vroombrandt? You remember that guy in the, in the communist countries? That he went and he was thrown in jail and they just couldn't kill this guy. This guy would not die. <laughs> And then they gave him a job, and that was to go and stand in the, what's a nice word, the poo poo. And you had to, he had to clean that, and I don't know what, but he was halfway deep in that. That was his job. And in that place, in the book that he wrote, he, he said he, he was so grateful that he could find a place where he could open his mouth and sing the praise of God. You could openly pray. You could openly praise the Lord. You could, you could sing. And he was so grateful because he couldn't do it among the people. Then they're going to beat him up again. But he's in a place where he's free to worship God. <laughs> he's in a place where he's free to express his love for God and express prayer and express the word. And Shoo! Or are we, if we come in such a situation... <clears throat> that we just pray to get out. That's all that we can think of. Where you are now, let the praise be in your heart. Let the grateful praise be in your heart in the midst of your situation. And how more intense it get, the more grateful you become in your praise. To use the opportunity that you will never have in heaven. 
that you have on earth, that in the midst of your situation, you will honor him. You will honor him. I will say salvation comes from the Lord. And then, only then, only then, everybody say only then. Without him knowing that this could be a trick. And the Lord commanded the fish. And it vomited, vomited Jonah out onto the high land. Um, yeah. Praise God for the opportunity to be vomited out. <laughs> I'm just right there. Okay, so, I mean, come on, man, what fish must go there and go close to dry land? It's just, that is a miracle in itself. Just like this. But then he was prepared to be obedient. And the fear of God was on his life. The fear of God was on his life. And he went. And he went. In chapter 4, he wanted everything to happen in the way that he prophesied. Yes, the people must be destroyed. And then God had grace. And he said, I knew, I knew, he says, I knew you're going to have grace on them. I knew. Because why? He just experienced it one chapter before. <laughs> God's grace. When he actually didn't deserve it, he got it. And I knew that God most probably going to give them also grace. <sighs> like he gave me grace. Hello. Then you have God's heart. Because then he got angry and he felt miserable. And there, after breakthroughs and after God showed others grace, he said, Lord, take my life. We're supposed to say it when you are, while you are in the fish. When everything went wrong, when everything went wrong and you fell in the storm, you're supposed to die and drown and you went to the deep depths of the earth and there a fish to take you even more deeper into trouble. And in that place you're supposed to be angry and say, God, where is, is there no mercy? You know, is there no mercy? My life is, is gone. In that place you're supposed to say, Lord, Lord, take my life, please. Oh, there was a testimony in his heart. And then when... Out there, when we get involved with one another, involved with his grace, involved, involved in what he wants to do, now we have an issue. You know, when the church grow up, and when God takes us through the biggest challenges, how shocked we're going to be, how the nation's going to come in for Christ, how the prodigals going to come in. And may we be so mature in that day, that our hearts will be open to receive the Nineveh in repentance. The nations that were so bad, that did such a lot of wrong, that our hearts will be open enough to receive them in the name of the Lord. Amen.